I'm Haley with Herbal Meadows Botanicals, and today I'm going to be sharing with you all about my excursions with foraging rose hips. Rose hips are one of my favorite herbs to forage, and obviously one of the only things to forage this winter. So I'm going to be sharing with you how I forage these rose hips, how I bring them home and dry them, and then what I use them for. So let me bring you in and show you what I've got. Let's first learn how to identify rose hips. There are over 300 types of wild and cultivated roses. Today we will speak of three wild varieties that frequent my area here in Michigan, which are dogwood rose hips, rugosa rose hips, and multiflora rose hips. I typically find my rose hips along trails and wood edges, as well as creek sides. You can identify a rose plant in the spring or summer and return to forage the hips as long as the flowers were not picked. Hips ripen throughout fall and are best harvested after the first frost. The hips become easier to harvest as the season goes on and they soften on the bush or vine. Rose hips are usually oblong to round and full of seeds and itchy hairs. Here is a close-up of one of my rose hips. The sepal and the filaments are remainders of the old flower and the stem grows from the bottom. The bright red shades to even orange at times attract my eyes and make them easy to spot and harvest. I always look for rose thorns when I'm identifying my rose hips. Rose thorns are unique in shape with a hook that is unique and easily identifiable. You really can't miss those thorns when you're going to forage for rose hips, trust me. I've had my share. As we work our way up the rose bush, we can see that inside of the rose hips have tons of tiny little seeds as well as tiny little hairs. These tiny little hairs can be really itchy. You do not want to ingest them. They can itch in your intestines. A lot of times children will put this itchy hair down each other's shirt and it'll itch for the rest of the day. Given that the inside of rose hips are full of seeds, you can save these seeds and grow these rose bushes at home. So keep that in mind next time you're foraging rose hips. Usually a small tug is enough to remove the hip from the stem, but certain varieties can be easier to harvest than others. Just out here hunting rose hips. I'm a rose hip hunter. Let's talk varieties. Here in southwest Michigan, I commonly find multiflora rose hips. They are a very tiny oblong rose hip and are the most common rose hip used for skincare products. These hips are so popular in skincare because of their ability to increase collagen and reduce inflammation and moisturize very nicely. These hips are used for tea and culinary practices as well. Multiflora means many flowers. These hips are not native to the U.S., but they sure are of value in my opinion. I most commonly find them along trails with some sunny exposures. Next, let's explore the Rugosa Rose Hips. This is said to have had the best tasting, sweetest hips, and that explains why this variety is so widely used for its flavoring. These rose bushes have extended bloom time and are very easy to grow. I typically find these rose hips in the wild along waterways, but I have found them in open fields as well. This is an easier variety for me to forage because of the structure of the vines. The size of these hips make them easy to pick right off the vine. I usually wait to visit these specific rose hips because they seem to be easier to pick as the season progresses into late December, early January. And this is because they dry themselves a bit on the vine. This means less work for me. I must speak on ethical foraging, which means that I share these blessings with nature. That being said, these rose hips feed birds, deer, and many other creatures who depend on nature for food. We only forage 10% in the area to ensure ethical harvesting. Nearing the end of January here in Michigan and rose hips start to go bad and rot. Since Rugosa rose hips are in abundance in my area, where deer do not frequent, I like to visit nearing the end of January and collect all of them before they start to warm and go to waste.
<laughs> Just out here picking some rose hips. So beautiful out here. Lastly, we will visit dog rose hips. This is the hip with the highest levels of vitamin C and antioxidants. These are the most commonly used in jams, syrup, and tea. They are oblong and easiest to remove the itchiest hairs and seeds. They grow in a shrub with arching stems, and I find these growing in rocky, disturbed areas in full sun. This is my favorite variety. I think this is everyone's favorite variety. This is most commonly sold at all of the herb stores for dried rose hips. The reason I include rose hips in my tea every day is because rose hips contain more vitamin C than oranges. I've only come across several bushes of this dog rose hips in my area, which is really unfortunate because these are my absolute favorite kind. They are really easy to eat and you can just pick them apart on the trail for a quick snack. These are the exact rose hips that I use in my tea throughout the year. These dog rose bushes grow real thick together and so I'm getting all of these rose hips in a place where really the deer cannot reach because of the thorns. So obviously the thorns are a protective mechanism from the rose so birds and deer cannot access the place where I am grabbing the remainder of these rose hips so they don't go to waste. It is February now here in Michigan. All right, now that we've gone through all about harvesting, let's talk about what we're gonna do when we get these rose hips home. When I bring my rose hips home, sometimes if they're dirty, I'll put them in a colander and go ahead and spray them off. Rose hips aren't particularly a dirty foraging item, but the sepal and the filaments, as I described in the beginning, can kind of like dry and degrade onto the rose hips, which kind of make them a little bit dirty as far as how they feel. So some people like to wash them off. If you do wash them off, you can either throw them in a paper bag to dry in a cool, dark, dry area, or you can throw them on a drying mat like I have here. This is actually a sweater drying rack. I use this drying rack for all of my herbs and it is absolutely amazing. If you don't have a mesh drying wrap of some type, I suggest you get one. Here you can see I have the dog rose hips. They're drying in a sprouter tray. It is winter, so I'm not doing much sprouting, micro sprouting, but I am using this tray to dry my rose hips during the winter. And then here you see I have rose hips dried in a paper bag. So I prefer to get paper bags at my grocery store and use the paper bags to dry my rose hips in. Um, the sprouting tray works great. As I said earlier, you can see those sepals below. That's what I'm showing you here. And these, I just are, I'm so in love with these rose hips. They are just so beautiful, red and vibrant. If you've ever bought rose hips from a herbal supplier, they hardly ever, ever are bright red. And the color of the herbs shows you the freshness. So let that tell you a lesson about why you need to be harvesting your own rose hips. Here you can see I'm sorting out some of the debris. It's definitely a process to get all these thorns and sepals out and I want to prepare these exact rose hips for tea as I've been waiting for this forage all year. You can clean the sepals and the debris out of the rose hips if you choose or you can store them and clean them out as you use them. These multi-flora rose hips are easily removed off of the stem when you let them dry on the stem and then kind of shake them up and they'll just pop right off of there easily versus picking them off each one with your finger while they're moist, that takes forever. Here I am jarring up the rugosa rose hips. You can see along this canning jar funnel, the debris that kind of builds up and that would have come out if I would have sifted these, but I'll do it before I use them. So I use this canning funnel to get all my herbs into this half gallon jar. 
and this is how I'm going to be storing my rose hips. I have these green wide mouth sprouting lids and these work great when you're not 100% sure if your herbs are 100% dry. You never want to contain any rose hip that you're not sure if it's 100% dry they will mold very easily and I prefer these sprouting lids because they keep airflow within the jar if they're not 100% dry but I always make sure they are before I put them into the jar and I make sure I put a date on them so that I know when I harvested them and when they're from so I'm using last year's robes hips first now I'm jarring up my multi-flora rose hips. So I store all of my rose hips in jars and if you don't have the sprouting lids, that's fine as well. Here you can see I have my dog rose hips ready for tea. We talked earlier about those hairs that are inside the rose hips. You never ever want to use rose hips opened and ingest those hairs so you can use these tiny little tea strainers. They come in very handy to help you sift out and leave everything kind of compact when you are steeping your tea. I specifically have a citrus allergy right now, so rose hips are essential for my vitamin C intake. I am super stoked. I drink tea morning, noon, and night, and so I'm really happy to have these fresh harvested rose hips. Here you can see I have different styles of tea strainers I wanted to show you that are available to use. Um, the thinner mesh is the better to keep those hairs compa compacted and away from your liquid. Here is a tea bag that you can pack different herbs with, but I prefer this teacup. This, I will put the link for this teacup below. I have a few different ones of these and they're really great because they come with the top. Tea time! I don't eat a lot of citrus, so these rose hips really help me get my vitamin C intake. Rose hips I use around my house in an abundance of ways, and probably because I have so many of them from foraging. I love to infuse them in many different varieties. Here I am making a rose hip seed oil. I have a video on that. Make sure you check that out and spend that time with me. Rose hips are so beneficial for the skin and they just smell amazing. It's one of my top selling products. You should check out my website at www.herbalmeadowsbotanicals.com. I'll put a link for my website below. Take a few moments with me of relaxation in the meadows. I hope you enjoyed spending today talking all about rose hips. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for future videos on foraging and herbalism and other all natural projects and crafts. Don't be shy. Be sure to comment your thoughts or questions below. Let's talk about rose hips. Share your love with me. Also, be sure to like my video. It lets me know that I'm making the right content. Don't forget to share. Help me spread the love that I have for foraging and herbalism. Thanks again for spending today with me. I'm Haley from Herbal Meadows Botanicals. See you next time.